give us some uh, of your. Nilavani Prabhu, I, I could not serve you in New Vrindavan. You wanted uh, me to come there, but somehow Krishna arranged that I can serve. Somehow like, Krishna arranged that I can serve. Like, that's nice. That's nice. And that, that, that is my good, that is my good fortune. Mm. Mm. Okay. okay. Wonderful. 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 Someone's phone Someone's is echoing. Is... Okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> Should I begin? Um, uh, we can we begin. Wait? We, no, no, no. We don't need to wait. We usually do two or three minutes of kirtan. And then we start. And just to let you know, um, His Holiness Jayadwait Maharaj is also on, on the conference. So... He's been giving classes every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and listening on other days too. So it's uh, we're very, very happy to have you both. So um, if you'd like to do Kirtan or that's what Madan Gopal Prabhu can do a couple of minutes of Kirtan, then we can start. Yeah, I just can we do some introduction? Okay. Yeah. Um, so Madan Gopal Prabhu, let's do two minutes Kirtan, then we'll do a quick introduction, and then we'll start. All right. Na o Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya, Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Niti Namine, Na o Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya, Bhutale, Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Niti Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharini, Nilishesha Shinyamati, Ashyatya Deshatarini, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharini, Nilishesha Shinyamati, Ashyatya Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jaya Chaita Gadatha Jiva Sadi Gaurvata Vinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Jaya Chaita Gadatha Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Krishna, welcome everybody to today's Sangha program. Today we're very, very happy and honored to have his grace Shamananda Prabhu from um, Mumbai, Chopati Temple. 
So just for those of you who do not know, Shamananda Prabhu. So Shamananda Prabhu joined ISKCON in the Chopati Temple in 1990, so almost 30 years. And he's, uh, he's a very deep scholar in the whole Bhakti tradition. He spends a lot of time traveling and uh, mentoring devotees all over the world. Um, devotees, householders, others, and everyone appreciates his very down-to-earth nature, very friendly approach and just uh, ability to help them. He's also served as a temple president in Chopati Temple and is part of the Chopati leadership body. Today he's going to speak about the glories of Hanuman, an exemplary dasya. So we're very, very grateful and happy to have him. Just a quick, quick uh, story. I met Shamanan Prabhu in New Rundavan, I think, what, is there a few months ago? I don't remember exactly when. And I begged and pleaded with him to please come to Tawako. Yes, it was at Thanksgiving time and give a class then. Somehow or other, he escaped at that time and he couldn't <laughs> squeeze us into his schedule. But somehow or other, we captured him on the online uh, uh, online Sangha. Thank you to Yashoda Dulal for coordinating and arranging this. And uh, Chamananda Prabhu, this does not excuse you from coming to Tawako next time you're physically here, okay? So I just want to make that clear. <laughs> All right, so we shall begin. Um, Vandeyam Shri Guru Shri Juta Padakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sagana Ragunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakhan Vitamscha Omagyana Timirandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Namaum Vishnu Padayu Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namini Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakal Pataru Gascha, Kripa Sindhu Bhyayvacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo, Navo Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada, Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. <coughs> Excuse me. Hare Krishna, everyone, and uh, accept my Dandot Pranams from Mumbai Chopati. And uh, my obeisances to all the seniors present here, especially Zolya Jayadaj Swami Maharaj and others. So we just celebrated uh, Hanuman Jayanti in India. I just checked that uh, it's not there in our Vaishnav calendar. Uh, we have Balram Rasayatra, Balram Purnima, and uh, it's 5.45 in the morning here. And I was in our temple courtyard, socially distanced and isolated, but could see the glory of the full moon. So very happy, very pleasing sight. Today, I just uh, chose this topic, uh, Glories of Sri Hanumanji, the exemplar of Dasyaras, devotional service. So what we should be doing is we should be seeing something from the Sundar Kand of Ramayan, especially the part where Hanuman jumps over to Lanka. That particular episode, he is meeting with Mother Sita 
and I just discovered there are three or four very unusual stories of Hanuman connected with some ancient temples and the last part would be an understanding of this Dasyaras for which Hanuman has been proclaimed as the exemplar or the real emblem of Dasyaras and what exactly this Dasyaras is from uh, Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita and a little bit of net, from Nectar of Devotion. So, the Sundar Kand of Ramayan is called Sundar, beautiful, and expert relishers of Ramayan say that the real hero of the Sundar Kand is not Ram, but Sri Hanumanji. And there lies the glory of the Lord as well as his devotee. The devotee always tries to glorify the Lord and the Lord also wants to see his devotee glorified. Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport uh, that Hanumanji or Garuji would be on the flags of various kings or even on in temples also we have Hanuman and Garud. And that symbolizes that the Lord is more interested in glorifying his devotee. So the situation is, it is the, month, the four months of Chaturmas and Lord Ram is showing extreme separation from Mother Sita almost 24 by 7, he cannot just talk of any other subject except Sita. It is Sita, 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 Sita. Sometimes he gives in to despair, sometimes to disappointment, sometimes to anger. What is this Sugriva doing? Is this friendship? I, I did everything to reinstate him on the throne of the kingdom of Kishkinda. And look at him now. And this is enough to anger Lakshmana so much. He decides to march in. And all the monkeys are terrified. That what would Lakshmana do? Here Sugriva, after regaining his kingdom, regaining his wife. He is just having a good time. Music, song, dance, intoxication. So Lakshmana enters Sugriva's inner chambers only to find him dressed in garlands and having silk cloth. But one thing he had done, which was enough to alleviate Lakshmana's anger, he had already dispatched his commanders to fetch all the monkeys and a search campaign was already launched. So somehow Lakshmana gets pacified and he says, all right, immediately dispatch the search parties in all four directions. So Sugriva announces that you have one month, you score each and every corner, go into every nook and cranny and somehow get Sita. So north, west, and east, various Vanaras are deputed as the commanders and they go with their big search party. Somehow, Sugriva felt in his heart that maybe the southern direction is where we can get the actual clue as to the whereabouts of Mother Sita. So he sent Hanuman and other choice like Angada, Neela, Jambavan, he had that premonition. So this search party goes in the southern direction and there's a very wonderful description of how 
they come into a underground cave with luminous trees and um, there are precious stones. They meet in a female ascetic, Swayam Prabha. And somehow they are not able to understand why we don't get any clue about the whereabouts of Sita. So in that cave, they have all varieties of foodstuff, so they were all famished with hunger. But now they are fresh, they are fit. And she, they were all in that cave, but then she brings them back to the mouth of the cave. But now it's almost a few days after the one month deadline has passed. And Sugriva said that within a month you all have to come back. So now it is do or die. Either we find her or we kill ourselves. Since there is no clue, they all decide to go on a hunger fast. And seeing so many thousands of monkeys sitting down to fast and to death, one very old vulture, he comes in and he starts talking that Oh my God, I haven't had such a feast for a long time. Now these people are all voluntarily giving up their bodies. So I'm very happy. Now the monkeys are thinking that, hey, look at our fate. Now here is a vulture already ready to devour us, even when we are not dead yet. But somebody mentions Jatayu. How Jatayu? fought against Ravana uh, and this vulture says you mentioned my brother how do you know so mm -hmm. they say oh you are a friend of Jatayu you are, you are a brother of Jatayu you are a friend of Ram he said I could confirm that I could see Ravana and his chariot and there was this lovely maiden and he went in the southern direction. So now they have this clue but who will jump over the ocean. So all the monkeys they start calculating about this they start taking a stock of their own qualifications. Somebody says I can jump 30 miles, 40 miles, 40 yojanas. Angada is the one who says, I think we can see this location of Lanka. I don't just have the confidence that I can come back. As this whole thing is going on, one candidate who should be talking, who should be leading the whole expedition is silent. And that we'll see later why Hanuman is silent. So, the seniors among them, especially Jambavan and others, they start praising Hanuman. You can do this. You can do this. You are an eternal servitor of Ram. What is there that you cannot do? Your strength is immeasurable. Your intelligence is immeasurable. And there is a transformation happening right then and there. Hanuman slowly, slowly expands his body and uh, we know the term Vishwarup. Of course, in the Bhagavad Gita, we see that as Krishna's universal form. But devotees of Hanuman also praise that as a Vishwarup, meaning an exceptionally tall, gigantic display of Hanuman's physical form. And Hanuman says, not only I will go there, not only I will conquer Ravana, but I promise I will bring her back. And everybody was thinking, Jai, Jai, this is the Hanuman we, we knew and we love. 
So Hanuman takes a jump from that mountain peak over there just by the sheer pressure of his legs the mountain crumbles there is a vivid description of like ramayana is really filled with so many poetic vivid descriptions trees are smashed the mountain minerals become not only pulverized but actually liquefied that molten liquid flows down and anuman is seen roaring on his way to conquer lanka this is a pivotal episode in the journey of lord ram ramayana means the journey of ram yes she could every now and the demigods are also witnessing this and now begins a three part uh description which ramayana acharyas scholars have also attributed to a neophyte's journey first we will see the description and then we'll see the connection with our spiritual lives there is a submerged mountain peak called mainak and mainak is requested to just surface and allow our hanuman to just sit there relax drink some fresh water eat some fresh fruits and then again continue his journey so as hanuman is continuing his jump mainak surfaces and humbly prays oh servitor of ram i'm very happy seeing your service would you like to rest a while take some fresh fruit i have the most succulent juicy fruits here there are gardens where you can relax and anuman looks down accepts the mood in which facilities are offered touches the peak by his palm joins his palms in a mudra of gratitude and says no thanks now is not the time for relaxing i have just begun my devotional service in this expedition of trying to get back mother sita from the clutches of this evil ravana now i won't be accepting any service so that is the lesson given that while preaching krishna consciousness not exactly unfriendly elements but even sometimes friendly elements may offer services which may have the potential of distracting us from our goal hanuman moves forward now there is another lady whose name is surasa and she also is requested to test arjuna so suddenly arjuna uh, uh, sorry hanuman and hanuman finds himself seeing this fearful gigantic demoness kind of woman she says if you want to cross over there is a condition i have the power to swallow anyone who jumps from this part of the ocean and well arman understands if i can survive only then i can pass over so arman says all right 
he begins he began to expand his form and surasa seeing his form bigger than her mouth she begins to expand her form and that there's a competition hanuman simply grows bigger and bigger and bigger surasa's mouth also becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and within a tiny flash hanuman just becomes like a thumb size one enters into her mouth comes back and then says now what she says oh you are very intelligent i was told you are very intelligent but now i can see all blessing sun may you be successful so the first test was a facility very positive hanuman politely rejected second was more intense you had to really use your intelligence hanuman did not fight her hanuman did not have any notions of killing her that's coming next as he continues his jump suddenly he is almost frozen in mid air suspended animation and he finds that his shadow has been caught by someone now that is strange he was thinking what kind of mystic power is this that somebody can catch an object just by his shadow or a person by his shadow this is simhika and she says you are my food i'm going to eat you up and this is serious she was not sent by the demigods she was not somebody who was favoring his quest so he allows her to swallow him he goes inside her demoniac body and hanuman tore open her entrails he just destroys her intestines and comes out and looks at her the whole body is a bloody mess and then goes on forward so sometimes it is said that three ways in which we can be tested or three ways in which we can we have to deal with the situation one is a very positive alluring one where we are careful second is where we use our intelligence and not try to unnecessarily fight and the third one where the intent is demoniac somebody wants to destroy a particular vishnu and here we see arjuna showing that character that he just tore open the intestines of this simhika and now he sees the golden spires of lanka he sees the gate and he lands just near the gate he's taking a stock of the situation as to what should i do he's taken a very tiny form and then he sees one lady anuman goes there she says halt who comes there i am lankini i am the superintendent of this fortress like city and no one goes inside without my permission you look like a thief and you need to be punished so i was hearing a commentary by god krishna maharaj and he said this is the way of the world this is lanka where everything is stolen there is not a single opulence there is not a single could be like a furniture piece or a you know like a toothbrush which ravana purchased himself so to say and everything is stolen property in fact uh, shila prabhupad was once in london and he was asked that would you like to see the british museum it has all nice artifacts and glorious things from all over the world 
And Srila Prabhupada in his Rai humor said, Museum here in Britain, stolen property. And everybody laughed. So Ravana's Lanka was like that. Aditi, the mother of demigods, her earrings, Varuna, the most opulent deity, superintendent of the oceans, his umbrella. The Pushpaka aeroplane from Indra Loka and what not. In fact, Ravana had a very simple philosophy. If I have it, it is mine. And if you have it and I like it, it is mine. Very simple in one way. Now Hanuman was on an emergency mission. He didn't have time for any explanation. So Lankini finished her discourse, telling what she is and what her power is. He just goes near her and gives her a, a resounding slap. Sometimes preaching also is like this. In emergency situation, of course, not to be imitated. Now this one small blow, now that was not like a really planned kind of a thing. Just at the spur of the moment, Arjuna thought that I'm not here to listen to this a woman spout out these lies. She immediately falls at his lotus feet and says, now I know Brahma had told me that once, uh, that when a monkey comes and defeats you, that's the beginning of the end of Lanka. You may pass. Anuman says, thank you. And now it's almost night time. So the quest is Sita, where should I find her? Of course, Ravana has accosted her, so I have to find Ravana. The biggest and the most opulent of these golden spires and gleaming marble palaces has to be Ravana's. So he chooses the biggest one, goes there, it has so many chambers, so many rooms, and there was music, song, dance, intoxication, and all these things. And Hanuman is going from room to room trying to find. And then he finds people in all kinds of states. Some are half intoxicated, some are fully asleep in a stupor. People are just leaning over their musical instruments. There are signs of gorging on all kinds of feasts, flesh products especially. And Hanuman says, what am I doing? Am I even supposed to, I'm a brahmachari, am I supposed to wander like this in these antechambers where I'm seeing all these women? Is it not an offense? Why am I doing it? And then he answers it himself. Well, I'm on a quest. I am doing this just because I'm serving my Lord Ram. My dear Lord's eternal consort is kidnapped. Ravana is the suspect. So where else would I find her? So that's how he satisfies himself. But then again, he gets a thought that I don't think Sita will ever accept his offer of staying in such an opulent palace. And he says, yes, that's it. So I don't need to investigate these rooms anymore. He goes out and he's intensely praying. He doesn't have a clue as to where in this vast kingdom of Lanka Sita could be, but He's praying and then he sees this Ashoka Vatika, a beautiful orchard garden. And he says, let me try there. He goes there and then he sees so many demonesses, females with, the Ramayana gives such a vivid description of, they all had faces of various wild animals. Their limbs were all of such a, 
deformed variety. They were all cruel. And uh, in the midst of that whole scenario, he sees a frail woman who is just, her head is buried in her knees and she's crying. And he says, oh, let me look at this scene. Again, he takes a very small form, goes down, and is trying to just make a intelligent guess that this has to be Sita. As Hanuman is thinking, what's the next step? He sees a whole musical parade, a procession with soldiers coming in with young ladies and then a big umbrella and below it the man himself Ravana. Ravana comes and makes so many entities. Sita, I'm giving you this last chance. If you don't agree to be my consort, I will eat you up alive. Sita says, no, never. She keeps a small blade of grass in between. She doesn't even want that ethereal connection between this vile person and her delicate persona. In the original Ramayana of Valmiki, he makes a very important comment here in this particular episode. Ravana doesn't know who Sita is. She is the eternal energy of Krishna or Rahu. And she is extreme, she's all powerful. He clearly says there that she could have destroyed Ravana by her own potency. But she didn't. Why? Because one answer is this is Leela. The Lord plays with material elements while he's here. None of the material elements can conquer Lord Ram. But for you and me, the Leela has to proceed. So Valmiki Mini just cautions us, takes a small brief moment to remind us who she is. And now again, the Leela is set in motion. Frustrated, Ravana goes back. Now all the these demonises are supposed to guard Sita, move away. And now Hanuman says, think fast, think fast, I have to do something now. So he starts glorifying Lord Ram. There was a kingdom of Ayodhya ruled by a very pious Dashrath. He had four sons. The most beloved was Ram. Ram was always inseparable from Lakshman. Bharat and Shatrugna were the other brothers. They all four loved each other. Unfortunately, Lord Ram was banished. And his wife, Sita, who didn't actually require to go, only he was banished. But being a faithful consort, she followed him. Sita, almost on the verge of death. Now again, Valmiki assures her that she's not going to die. But in the Leela, we need to understand that this adds to the, the dramatic value of something. She looks up, doesn't find anyone. But at least hearing Lord Ram's name chanted so faithfully gives her some hope. And there she sees a small squirrel-like figure. She doesn't know whether it's a monkey or what exactly is it. And he starts speaking. He starts chanting Lord Ram's name. He starts chanting Lord Ram's glories. Oh, Sita is so happy that finally there is someone Maybe he has come from, he has been dispatched by Ram and now there is a rescue effort. Maybe my ordeals will be over. 
Oh no, the next moment she says, this is Ravana. He has taken a disguise. He's a cheater. Again she faints. After some time she gets up and Hanuman says, I am not Ravana. I am just a humble, obedient servant of Ram. All right. Prove it to me that you are Ram's servant. So Lord Ram had already told him that in case you find Sita, show her this ring. That will be the evidence. So Hanuman shows the ring. Now Sita is completely assuaged. She is convinced that this is not Ravana, this is Hanuman. And then they discuss so many things. Finally, Hanuman says, let's not waste time here. I'll take you right now. She says, no. I won't be carried by any other Parapurush, anyone except my own husband. I will not allow anyone to touch my body who's not my husband. Now the question is, hey, you allowed? You allowed in the sense Ravana did touch you. So she also clarifies, that was by force. That was not by my volition. But now I won't. Plus I want the world to know that my husband is a glorious warrior. He's a proper Kshatriya. He knows the values of Kshatra Dharma. Therefore I cannot come. Plus she adds, how can you carry me? <laughs> Look at you, you, you are obedient, you are pure, your intentions are very nice. But you are small, you are tiny. Oh, Anuman says, mother, don't worry. This is how I am. And he shows that gigantic form again. And Sita is very happy. She says, well, as I told you, I won't be carried by any Parapurush. What if I fall again while you are carrying me? So better Lord Ram come here. So Hanuman says, all right. How do I give my Lord the evidence that I actually met you? So she narrates a particular incident where the son of Indra took the form of a crow and, a cow and he assaulted her body. Now this was something which only Sita and Ram knew. She says that when you tell this incident, Lord Ram will know that actually you met me. Then of course I am not going through the whole detail. It's almost 45 minutes. We shall go to some other topics in glorifying Hanuman. So on the way, Hanuman decides to teach Ravana a lesson. He sets the whole city of Lanka on fire. And here Sita is praying to Agni Dev that please do not burn his tail. So this is Sundar Khan. Now Hanuman has become so popular in India that in many places, in almost all corners of India, there are temples of Hanuman. He is called Bajranga Bali, Bajra Anga. The Vajra of Indra, which was let loose on him, could not destroy him. So his body is that formidable, strong. So as I told you that Anuman was not aware of his glories. He had to be reminded. So this has connection with Hanuman's appearance. So just in short, how Hanuman appeared. Kesari was the name of the king of the Vanaras. 
and an apsara named anjana was cursed to take birth in the marchaloka middle planetary system and that too as a vanari so why you once saw anjana's beauty and was so enamored that that like although she is described as a vanari she doesn't belong to the species of monkeys she has that apsara like beauty so why you unites with her in a mystic way and a beautiful son is born now since he is born in that vanara species and vanaras or monkeys like to eat fruits he sees the sun and thinks that this newly rising sun looks like a juicy fruit so he races to eat the sun and why you is helping him why you is very happy that oh look at my son now the son is actually terrified there is rahu who also as we know from the eighth canto we gets a chance to devour the sun and the moon and that is called an eclipse so in that race hanuman actually defeats rahu seeing that this is vayu's son surya dev also is very happy and he gives him a boon that i bless him with all knowledge i bless him with strength rahu also says that anyone is very popular in india if somebody takes shelter of hanuman then my effect on their life could be decreased and another incident hanuman is struck by indra and hanu is the chin and that's where indra's vajra hits him and he falls down unconscious now why you is in rage how dare you do this to my son why you is a life breath flowing all over the universe flowing in our bodies so why you go on a strike and everybody is choked so again hanuman is revived but then in his childhood he was so mischievous he would not allow the sadhus and rishis in the forest to perform their sacrifices for from the duties finally they decide now this is parenting ancient bharatvarsha style they decide to curse him that you will forget all about your strength all about your knowledge everything unless somebody reminds you you will not be aware of what your capabilities are so bereft of all this knowledge hanuman becomes a very very nicely behaved young vanada so that's the back story uh i promised you we will see some strange stories strange in sense very beautiful also in jagannath puri there are ashta mahavir eight hanumans in jagannath puri temple and one of them a very sweet story is kana pata hanuman kana means ear and pata means somebody is trying to find out this kana pata hanuman is on the western side of the jagannath temple and the story given by local devotees is that lord jagannath jagat this material world nath the lord every day thousands and thousands of pilgrims devotees they come and they make their 
prayers and their wishes and oh my lord please help me with this please help me with that day in day out management lord jagannath has to take the report of all universal affairs and his elder brother stays with him mahalakshmi who is his consort she also stays in same palace but husband and wife they need to meet and talk to each other have some confidential communication but lakshmi doesn't have that chance if she goes in the main hall then there is balram present over there so once trying to find a quiet corner where husband and wife can talk husband and wife talk whatever that is there is this noises of the ocean making such loud noise and jagannath dev says i mean somebody should understand that you can't make such a big ruckus over here but then he realizes that my god i made a mistake of course krishna doesn't say jagannath doesn't say my god he's god himself he has somehow said something about the ocean who technically is lakshmi's father lakshmi's father that is his father in law lakshmi is called sindhu ja sindhu ocean ja born and lakshmi didn't like it i mean which self respecting wife would see her husband making some snide remarks about her father so jagannath being a very not very the most intelligent husband he decides to do something about it he calls for hanuman and says that make sure the ocean doesn't make noise it should not reach this particular chamber so the ocean also is told that this kind of noise is not allowed here so on the western side near ma ma lakshmi's temple you will find hanuman who is trying to hear whether the ocean is making any sound or not and devotees say that although the those of you who have been to the jagannath puri ocean side know how much the ocean is active and is roaring but on this side where the hanuman is located that sound is not heard that is kanapata hanuman there is a bedi hanuman bedi means shackles iron shackles he is near the ocean side here the ocean is not allowed to make noise but there the fear was that the ocean would enter puri submerge the whole city town and go back so the devotees asked the lord that please do something so hanuman was kept on guard duty there don't allow the ocean to come inside hanuman said all right now those who are in india will understand this the north side of india northern part of india although people eat rice they also eat a lot of wheat wheat bread chapati western part also there is a lot of wheat it's mainly in the southern part that people prefer rice even three times so all of south india karnataka tamil nadu kerala andhra pradesh and then odisha and bengal also rice is preferred hanuman is not technically a south indian or a east indian ayodhya is in the north they like northern preparations chapati roti laddus and somehow 
the local people were not aware that our favorite security guard, we have never asked him what his favorite preps are. Finally, one day Hanuman thinks that I can't eat rice all the time. And he decides to visit Ayodhya just for a moment where he would just go and meet his favorite people there and they would offer him some delicacies which he likes. So he goes there, they are very happy. Oh, what are you doing nowadays? Oh, you are doing security duty for Jagannath. Very nice, very nice. Hanuman, I have made this for you. Hanuman, I have made that for you. People keep on giving him so much. And this is the time when the ocean says, hey, there is no guard here. The ocean enters Puri. People are again troubled. They, dis they, they dispatch for their security. There is no security over there. Finally, after some time, Hanuman comes. And now there is an inquiry commission. Hey, where were you? And Hanuman says, oh my. I just take a small break and this is what happens. So Jagannath understands and he says that, all right, give our favorite security guard the kind of preparations he likes. But they say, well, but uh, you know, he's a vanara, he's very chanchal. What if he leaves again? So they put him in shackles. Even today, you go to Bedi Hanuman temple, you'll find happily Hanuman is shackled, but he's getting the Ayodhya sweets and treats which he likes. Finally, there are two temples which uh, I was just trying to find out which are the nice nectarian stories of Hanuman's glorious service to Ram. In the Ananda Padmanabh Swami temple, which is in Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala, people apply butter to Hanuman's body. And that has reference to a fight between Ram and Ravana, where Hanuman was carrying Ram. And Ravana in anger decided to attack the carrier instead of the warrior. And it was a vicious fight. Ravana was not defeated, but he retreated. And Lord Ram saw that in the process of serving me, his whole body has wounds. So personally, Lord Ram decided to apply butter to soothe Hanuman's body. And that tradition is still kept alive. This is Thiruvananthapuram. They applied butter over Hanuman's body. In South India, the famous uh, nomenclature for Hanuman is Anjaneya, the son of Anjana. In Maharashtra, he is called Maruti, one of the Maruts, Pavan Putra, Bajarang Bali, all are names of Hanuman. And finally, there is a place called Suchindram. Suchi is to be cleansed of sin. Indram, that is Indra, when he got cleansed of the sin of having his union with Ahalya, the wife of Gautama Rishi. In that place, you have that temple, almost at 22 feet, huge Murti of Hanuman. And this Hanuman is garlanded not with flowers or with precious stones or rubies or pearls, but with Vada or Vadai, as they call it in South India. So the local story goes that Hanuman was given flowers, but he was not that happy. So Sita Devi, knowing exactly what a Vanara's mindset could be, she made Urad Dal Vadai. And it's not just one garden, one strand. So many covered all his whole body with Vadai. So there is a garland which is glorifying you. And also in case you're hungry, you can take one. So there's a tradition over there. They offer Hanuman this Udaddal Vada. 
and uh, Anuman is very happy with that. Now we come to the end of our presentation. Hanuman is glorified as the exemplar or the most perfect example of Dasya Bhav. Bhavabandha chidai tasyai sprihayami na muktaye Bhavan prabhur ahamdasa iti yatra navilupyate This one sweet words captures the whole mood of Hanuman. That Bhavabandha chidai the liberation which is aspired for by everyone, that's not my target. My Lord, please do not feel that I'm just chanting your name, serving you or serving your devotees just to get liberated from this material world. No. I don't want an existence where I am your eternal servant and you are my eternal master. That status should remain as it is. I cannot compromise it. This is the eternal dasya bhav. In the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Srila Prabhupada clarifies that what exactly do we mean by spiritual perfection, by spiritual purification? The perfection of purification is when one comes to the understanding that one is a constitutional uh, one is an eternal servant of Krishna. So many people came and gave commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita or still are giving. Just understand, no one gave the conclusion that the Gita means you have to understand you are a servant of God. Why can't they do it? Because they are never convinced that we are servants of God. In one lecture, Srila Prabhupada says that, all right, it's not like a choice. Some people want to serve God, some don't want to. Serve you must. There is no escape from service. Constitutionally, every jiva is meant for service. But because there is independence, they have a choice. So if you press the other button where you don't want to serve Krishna or Ram, doesn't mean you are exempted from service. You have to serve Maya. There is no third option available. So to conclude, let us all understand the glories of devotional service from the glorious servants of Ram like Hanuman, who are always happy. It is said that Ramayana is so distressing. Sometimes it is, it's not a happy incident. Lord Ram's leaving for the forest, Sita being kidnapped. But Srila Prabhupada explains, then why is Hanuman told to go through the Ramayana again and again and again? Outwardly it is distressing. Prabhupada assures, inwardly, it is saturated with transcendental bliss. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry if I've gone about seven minutes about time according to my watch. But if there are any comments and uh, those who are pressed with time, uh, and if you have any questions, we can take in my in my next session also, but if there are, do we have some two minutes for comments or question answers? <clears throat> sure, Prabhuji, you can stay as long as you have time and as long as people want to stay, so. Okay, I have time, as long as you have comments or questions or corrections, I'm, I'm happy. Thank you. <laughs> I'll request anyone with a question or a comment to unmute themselves and uh, uh, if possible, turn your video on also and just ask, so. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amanam. It's yes. wonderful to hear you. This is Shankaran Dasam. Hare Krishna. <laughs> it's a nice to hear from you, bro. Looking forward to have you also sometime here in Sacramento. Yeah, sure, sure.
Hare Krishna, Shant. Hare Bol. Hare Bol, Dandavads. Um, question for you. You said yeah. in the beginning, during the four months that uh, Sugriva was in his palace um, and Ram was impatiently waiting for him to come, you know, get free, uh, that he was, you know, indulging in intoxication, womanizing and so on. So how are we to understand that uh, while at the same time he's allowed to serve the Supreme Lord, because obviously the rules of bhakti for us are very different, no intoxication, no illicit sex and so on. Um, is it because it's a different yoga with different rules? Or is it because Lord Ram is making the best use of your best And so Sugriva was not necessarily a, a sadhaka bhakti. Okay. So this is exactly what our Kali Yuga mind tries to find out that, uh, hey, there is a concession over here. Why not? <laughs> Why not for me? The understanding is, Ramayana explains, Sugriv is a Vanara and the, the behavior which he shows while he is, um, he was like a, he was kicked out of his kingdom. Lord Ram helped him and then he came back. So the things which he was indulging in, number one, Kshatriyas could be allowed a little bit of a license for that. That's number one. And uh, seeing his particular situation, he was excused. It is no license for, for you and me to say that Hey, Sugriva is an Ansha of Surya, is a glorified person, and he's doing that, so why not me? No, that, that kind of concession is not allowed to us. The Ramayana doesn't ever uh, recommend that we should do that. And as you can see, even if you feel that he was allowed, the, he, he had to face Lakshmana's wrath. And I don't think uh, <laughs> you and me could face Lakshmana, when he comes and asks questions. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think we should play in our league. And uh, <laughs> as he obeyed Lakshmana, we also should obey what Prabhupada wants from us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. This is Gopinath Acharyadas. Hare Krishna. Nice to see you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. Prabhuji, you mentioned about uh, Chaturmas and uh, by the time that uh, Hanumanji, they found out about Mother Sita and then by the time Lord Ram had a fight with Ravan and come back by Dashera. So how do, how do we understand the Chaturmas timing and this uh, with the Dashera? Prabhuji? Thank you. Mm, it's a technical thing. I let me see. Uh, if the Shera is the time where Lord Ram defeated Ravan, uh, it could be in the subsequent year. It is. I. I. I, I don't know. I haven't read Ramayana with that kind of scrutiny, but the simple flowchart which I have in my mind is as follows. During the month of Chaturmas, Lord Ram was waiting for the expedition to happen. And uh, at Next the end year. of Chaturmas, uh, Sugriva was, he was indulging in his luxuries. Lakshmana came, they sent an expedition uh, that they, they started preparing, preparing also took some time. Then they gave a one month notice that we should all be back. They all came back. And then the Situ Banda and then the war preparations. So at least to my mind, that makes sense. It should be some other time. What do you say? Yes, Prabhuji. I think um, that sense yeah, could be next year. I'm also not sure. <laughs> but yeah, it kind of makes I will, sense. I'll try to find out. We have much better Ramayana scholars than me here. I'll, I'll get back to you. Sure, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna.
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, I, so I have heard from time to time that there is some connection between um, Hanuman and Lord Shiva. Is there is there something you can explain or do you have some knowledge in that? I, I haven't heard really conclusively. Well, I was just trying to find this out. I got something, but I'm not sure as to what exactly it is so i promise you uh, on the 12th or 11th whenever my next thing is i will try to get this answer i also is a bit curious because uh, there are two or three narrations about hanuman's appearance there are different narrations about how he appeared and you are right one narration has this thing that he has a amsha of shiva in him so I, I have something, but I haven't ratified it. I'll get back to you next time. Thank you so much. Look forward to hearing. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. So, okay. should we call it a day? Thank you. Okay, Shamanan Prabhu, thank you so much. Thank you all of the devotees for joining also. And um, um, requesting everybody to join again tomorrow for our Bhagavatam, continuation of Bhagavatam with His Holiness Jayadvit Swami. And then again, we will have the opportunity to hear from Shamanand Prabhu on Thursday evening here. So uh, please keep joining us. We have uh, lots of wonderful speakers coming every day uh, you know, through this uh, these next few weeks. So please continue joining us and taking advantage of this. and getting some association in these times of solitary confinement. Yeah.